Haji Ahmed Jusujaka had both his hands hacked off by rebels in January of 1996. I jumped through the window to escape myself and then they chop off my both hands. He was a successful businessman before his life was shattered by rebels, leaving him with no hands. Amputating limbs was one of the brutal strategies used during the Civil War by members of the Revolutionary United Front to terrify people to support them. Some 27,000 Sierra Leoneans are estimated to have been disabled or have had one or more of their limbs amputated during the brutal war. Alhaji's wounds are a bitter and constant reminder of the civil war that ravaged the West African country for 10 years. They felt that uh, by cutting people's arms and uh, killing people, burning houses, that uh, the international community will then say, OK, you can rule them. They are doing. It has been difficult to adjust for this double amputee, who now uses two metal pincers instead of hands. Alhaji, a father of five, is the main breadwinner in his family. How are you? How are you? Despite his disability, he keeps a watchful eye on security at the United Nations Integrated Peacebuilding Office in Sierra Leone, where he works as a guard. Here he dispels the notion that persons with disabilities are not useful to society. I walk from the bus and I have some dust in my shoes. According to the UN, the number of disabled people in Sierra Leone is estimated to be approximately 490,000. That's 10% of the population. The marginalization of people with disabilities has been pronounced in Sierra Leone, particularly in the political arena. But a new law is now in place to ensure equal opportunities for persons with disabilities. The Persons with Disability Act 2011 is modeled on the United Nations International Convention of Persons with Disabilities, domesticating it in Sierra Leone. Francis Cabia is the Director of Social Welfare in the Ministry in Charge of Disabilities. The highlight of the law talks about four key, key points which, which are subsumed under what we call the short title. First of all, it talks about uh, how do you call it? establishing equalization of opportunities, wherein a disabled person should have equal opportunity with an able person. Then it talks about prohibiting discrimination against persons with disability, that an individual is not discriminated against as a result of his uh, infirmity or as a result of his disability. Then it talks about the establishment of the National Commission for Persons with Disability. In November 2012, the first German election since the end of the Civil War to be held without UN oversight was held under this backdrop of a new law empowering persons with disabilities. Besides ensuring that persons with disabilities participated in the election, there was clamour for leadership and representation. Vying for a local council position in the capital Freetown, Moses Oju walked door to door convincing the electorate why they should vote for him. Oju developed polio defects on his right foot at the age of two and has been active in his community, working as a rubbish collector. But he wants to do more by representing not just persons with disabilities, but the entire community. I'm contesting because I see my community very undeprivable with needs. Yeah. Um, I see, I want to press forward to see, to help my community. Oju made his debut as a candidate, giving life to the new law that not only encouraged persons with disabilities to participate in the election process as voters, but to take part as candidates. And for the first time in the country's political history, all persons with disabilities were given priority lanes on the election day. Very happy in what the government do to the handicap because like we don't able to go and push omolanke, push omotka, drive, we don't able, we are begging the streets. I have my own line. I am the first man who are voting in the police station. I am the first man to vote. I feel good. I don't know what to talk to. 
Beatrice Balbin, the United Nations Human Rights Representative in Sierra Leone, outlined the outcome of a UN report that called for active participation of persons with disability in the political process, particularly the general election. The uh, reports made a number of recommendations both to um, state institutions and international partners and donors to ensure that there would be active participation to vote and be voted for by persons with disabilities. Um, I would say the results have been mixed so far in the sense that um, in terms of being voted for, a uh, number of uh, representatives that they were where they are before actually have not been nominated for the elections. However, there are new persons that have come in as, um, as uh, candidates for the local and for the parliamentary elections. But despite the progress that has been made towards democratization, poverty is still a major challenge. Sierra Leone is ranked 176 out of 177 countries on the United Nations Human Development Index. Observers see this as hampering the smooth process of the efforts put in place to ensure persons with disabilities were given priority during elections. On the election day, we met a determined voter whose leg had been amputated after a bout of diabetes. Aisha was being wheeled to the polling station by her grandson on a bumpy road. Access to the ballot was not easy. It took a determined Aisha, who was still coming to terms with her amputation, and a dedicated returning officer who carried her on his back to the ballot box. Happy for votes because I want the president. When I honest my people, when they make food for me, I work out which I will find for me. Then I didn't have a tear, I know we find for me. Infrastructural limitations are some of the setbacks a new commission of persons with disabilities, set up through the new Disability Act, will have to ensure are addressed. So one of the biggest issues that we will have to tackle is the question of infrastructural accessibility. Um, well, not only infrastructural, but accessibility as a whole. Because even in education, if there is no opportunity for the students, like the blind students, to access books and other material for them to learn, then it's not, uh, you know, they, they, they will have a problem. The government has cooperated with partners, who include the UN Human Rights Office, in implementing the new law. But Kabia acknowledges that the law alone on persons with disabilities will not yield much. I think as a government we are faced with a number of challenges. To start with, the Act tells us that uh, even the structures that we have must be, uh, must be adapted you know, so that uh, persons with disability must have an opportunity to access those structures. But like I talked to you, almost all the structures that we have in Sierra Leone are only constructed for able-bodied people. So, to make the populace understand this, first of all, is the greatest challenge that we have. In the meantime, Al Haji remains positive about his life despite his disability. He was enthusiastic about voting. I feel happy, I feel belonging to the society because of the fact that I am a citizen of this country, I have the, the legitimate right to cast my vote. But he stresses the need to promote peace and development, saying his disability was totally unnecessary. For, for instance, if I'm talking in terms of uh, violence, no violence and people to see reason, but they, they can see me that I, because of violence, that is why I'm, I, I'm having, I lose my buttons because of violence. So if I could stand before them and explain to them, they can see reason, they can see. And they must have to, their second thought to, to think wisely that uh, at the end of the conflict, this is the result that people would get. 
This is a permanent disability that I'm having.